In this video, we will explore the end behavior of x to the n power as we change the end value and explore the various degrees of the function. First, let's use a graphing calculator, or I'm going to use desmos.com to help us with the graphs. So this is what y equals x looks like. And this is what y equals x squared looks like. y equals x to the third power looks like that. x to the fourth power. x to the fifth power. And x to the sixth power. So I'm noticing that all of the even functions uh, look a lot alike. The even degree functions look a lot alike and all of the odd degree functions also have very much in common. So I'm going to sketch these graphs on the worksheet. Let's talk about the domain. Notice that all of the graphs are unbroken from left to right and they go left forever and they go right forever. Each case. So they will all have the same domain negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's talk about the range. Looking at the y values, um, this first function goes from negative infinity to positive infinity because it goes down forever and it goes up forever. Now x squared is a little different. It does not go down forever. It uh, goes up forever starting at 0 comma 0. So um, this range is going to be from 0 to infinity and let's be careful to put a bracket on the zero to show that it is included in the range. Um, now back to an odd degree function, it once again is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So uh, you might begin to notice that all of the odd functions have a similar uh, behavior and all of the even functions have a similar behavior. So all of the odd degree functions will have a range from negative infinity to positive infinity. While all of the even degree functions are going to have a range from zero to positive infinity. Now let's talk about end behavior. Now looking at f of x equals x, on the left it's falling and on the right end it's rising. So the end behavior is going to be like this. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. That means on the left end it is falling. And as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity, meaning on the right, it rises. Now, let's skip ahead because we know that all of the odd degree functions are behaving in a similar way. So notice, for every odd degree function, on the left it's falling, on the right it's rising on the left it's falling, on the right is rising. So all of the odd degree functions will have that same end behavior. Looking at x squared, notice that on the left it rises and on the right it rises. And notice that that is the same for all even degree functions. On the left it rises, on the right it rises. Let's look at x to the sixth power. On the left it rises, on the right it rises. It's rising on both ends. So for that reason, the end behavior is going to be as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. This means on the left it rises. And as x approaches positive infinity, f of x again approaches positive infinity, meaning on the right 
it rises. And I'm just going, going to duplicate this for the other even degree functions. Now let's talk about symmetry. When we're talking about function symmetry, we mean is the symmetry even, or is it odd, or neither. Remember, even symmetry means the function is symmetric about the y-axis. So the y-axis should split the graph right down the middle. So a parabola like this is going to be an even symmetry function. Odd symmetry means that is symmetric around the origin. Uh, for point symmetry, it's a rotational symmetry. So being symmetric about the origin means if you were to rotate the function around the origin and turn it upside down, it would still look the same. So I'm going to hit Control Z. That's going to snap this function back to its original orientation. And watch how it doesn't really change. Boom! All right, nothing moved except for the numbers. So if you turn an up, a function upside down around the origin and it still looks the same, then that's going to be odd symmetry. <clears throat> As we look across the graphs, notice that the even degree functions all have even symmetry. All right, y equals x squared. The y-axis splits this thing right down the middle. So that has even symmetry. And uh, all of the other even degree functions look very similar. So even degree, even degree. Um, even symmetry, even symmetry. Now notice that the odd degree functions all have odd symmetry. Okay, look at x to the third power. That graph is uh, very similar to problem number five here. And notice if I were to rotate this upside down, it still looks the same. So watch me do this control Z and snap this back to normal. Bam! Notice how nothing really changed. This has odd symmetry. So the same is going to be true for all of these odd degree functions. They all have odd symmetry. Based on what we've seen, we can predict the domain range, symmetry, etc. for many other functions. Um, x to the 35th power as soon as we see that it is an odd degree, um, we know that it's going to have the same domain range and symmetry as x to the third power did. So remember, x to the third power was looking like this. So um, all of the uh, odd degree functions will have the same domain range and end behavior. And the, the domain was negative infinity to positive infinity the range was negative infinity to positive infinity and uh, the symmetry was odd and for an explanation we'll just say something about how um, all odd degree uh, functions of this type have the same domain range and symmetry in other words x to the n power has the same domain range and symmetry for all odd values of n so now what about the domain range and symmetry of x to the 98th power? Well, that is an even value of n. And we've seen that all, uh, all of the x to the n functions um, have the same domain range and symmetry if the n value is even. So look at x squared and remember what the domain range and symmetry are. And that will be the answer for any even value of n right here. So the domain should be negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, the range is going to be 0 to infinity. OK, all right, because this was the x and y axis is right here. And the symmetry is even for all even values of n. So I'm going to make a similar statement for my explanation right here except for instead of saying odd values of n, I will say even values of n. So there you go. Now, what about the domain range and symmetry of 4x to the third power? 
Well, we've learned that uh, having a 4 right here would simply be a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. Uh, if you take an odd degree function, like x to the third power, and do a vertical stretch, um, you know, graphically it might look more narrow, uh, but that's the only effect that is uh, going to be had by doing a vertical stretch. This will not affect the domain range or symmetry of the graph. So our answer should be the same as our answer from problem number one. Okay, number four, what about negative two x to the 15th power? Well look, x to the 15th power is odd degree, so that should have the same basic shape to it as x to the third power did. Um, so what's the effect of multiplying by negative two? Well, that's a vertical stretch by a factor of two, um, which will not change the domain range or symmetry. But what about the negative sign? Um, well, the effect of the negative sign is a reflection over the x-axis. So that would turn the function upside down. So does that change the domain range or symmetry? Well, clearly, no. It still goes left forever and right forever. So the domain is still going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. It still goes down forever and up forever, so the range is still negative infinity to positive infinity. And it is still odd symmetry. If I turn this upside down, it would still look the same. So the symmetry is still odd. Notice that were we dealing with an even degree function, then um, having a vertical stretch and a reflection over the x-axis like negative 2 x to the fourth power would affect the range because if I turn this graph upside down it's going to look like this so whereas the first graph had a range from 0 to infinity this new graph would have a range from negative infinity to 0 what about 1 half x to the 18th power well, x to the 18th power is even degree. So that's going to have the same domain range and symmetry as this graph. Okay, uh, x squared is what I just drew. Um, but all even degree functions, if we're talking about x to a power, they all have the same domain range and symmetry. So um, doing a vertical str uh, compression by a factor of one half is going to make this look wider right if I do um, one half and I'll just say x squared again because it's the same thing might make this look wider um, but that's it that's not going to change the domain the range or the symmetry uh, so, for that reason, the domain will still be negative infinity to positive infinity. The range will still be from zero to infinity, and the symmetry will still be even. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe, or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.